Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a two box break of 2023 Bowman Draft Baseball Jumbo Edition from a fresh case. This is pick your team one. All card ship and if you bought a team, any team, you got a chance at the Nationals, which means you got a chance at the Expos, which means you have a chance at Tom Brady's. So big thanks to everybody here for making it happen. So now let's gather everybody's names. New dice, new list, name on top. After five, get an extra team, the Nationals. Good luck. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, oof. Eric M, very close, man, but just not quite. Appreciate everyone giving this a shot, but only one winner, and that's going to be Stephen P. One of the last teams taken, I want to say. So after five, congrats to you, and good luck. So there's also that little rooftop symbol next to your name so you know you won that spot in this randomizer. Now let's go ahead, print and rip. And we'll see which two boxes we're gonna do out of here. There's the final printout. Let's pop open this case. Home and draft jumbo. And you can see from this my face camera, right? It's sort of an awkward sized case. All right, so we're gonna go by column right here. So that this will be one, two, three, and four. Five or six, we'll just roll again. Six, three, one, two, three. And we're gonna do these two right here. These we'll take away. And let's see what we got. We were doing super jumbo yesterday. That's five autographs a box. Jumbo, three autos a box. A lot of missed opportunities for the uh, for the Washington Huskies here. I'm looking at the highlights. Scott Van Pelt. Kind of a couple big plays early. Put put the Washington Huskies in a hole right away. I feel like if that didn't happen, this would have been a lot lot closer of a game. Looks like Michael Penix was holding, carrying some sort of injury as well. Some drop, dropped passes. Misthrown, some, some, a misthrown ball here and there. Costly, silly, false start holding penalties, erasing some plays. And that's all she wrote.
All right, good luck everybody. We've got another two boxer in the store if you want to get after another one. And there's Christian Vaccaro, set 41 out of 75. That'll be for Stephen P. and the Nationals. The Max Clark paper. Believe it or not, we're, we're running out of football games, ladies and gentlemen. Baseball will be right around the corner, and we'll start to see how these prospects look maybe in spring training. I'm sure they'll have some of those guys will have a little bit of time in spring training. Let's see how they look throughout the, uh, throughout the minor league season. Matt Shaw, another guy to keep an eye out on. And there's our first autograph for the Cubs. Michael Carrico. That's going to be for Brian Heyman and the Cubbies. Still a handful of free agents, I feel like, who are still, who are still out there who have not been accounted for. Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger still out there. The other Japanese pitcher, Imanga, I think, still out there. There's Grayson Hit, 50 out of 50, gold paper. For Chris and the Diamondbacks. Got some Wyatt Langford glass, nice. It's gonna go to Texas, that'll be for Zach. Got blue Elijah Green to 150. Got Chris is reminding us JD Martinez still out there. He had a really nice season with the Dodgers last year. I feel like that's JD Martinez. It sounds like a, a good Mariner signing. Don't they need a DH? Guy that can hit? You, they got Mariners have pitching. They could use use some hitting around Julio. And he could be like a like another hitting coach as well with the way he approaches the game. It's Max Clark for Detroit, Zach. Cole Emerson, speaking of the Mariners, and Tommy Hawk. Not Tony Hawk, Tommy Hawk. For the Guardians, Brian with the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. Jake Wilsons will go to Chris and the A's. Matt Shaw will go to Brian H. And the Cubs, the Colt Emerson goes to Allen and Seattle. We've got some paper here. Cole Foster to 499. And there's the Matt Shaw. What were these called again? Some psychedelic shape, but they're, they're short prints though. That'll be, uh, once again, for the Cubs. That'll be for Brian H.
Oh, uh, mood ring. It's like the back of the card might give me a hint. Got Braden Taylor, draft picks and prospects to 99. Rays, that'll be for Allen. And Nazan Zenitello, purple chrome autograph for Boston, Chris Parent. CP with that one. 26 out of 250. Second round pick. Oh, there's the dog. Takes his dog on the road? It's a giant dog. There's the Paul Skeens paper. That'll be for Allen and the Pirates. All right, so there are your three autographs. I'll do a quick little recap. Well, it's, how long is this break in a deck? It's going to be about a 30-minute break, yeah. Let's see if the break is around 30-ish minutes or so. I'll do a recap. Anything under that. Make watch the video. Give us those, those views and clicks. Ah, sad interview time. All right, second box. We got it's just quick little two, a quick for Bowman draft. But uh, it's a quick two box break. We've got another two box in the store. We can run this back tonight. All right, any, no real baseball news happening here. I guess Cardinals president discussing payroll outlook. Nationals are looking for left-handed power. Yankees and Kevin Smith agree to a deal. Not really earth shattering headlines here. Cardinals hire Kime Bloom for advisory role. MLB Trade Rumors had a uh, the latest on Shoto uh, Imanaga. I guess we'll take a look at that. Some minor league deals happening here. Rob Brantley, minor league deal. Rockies looking for a left-handed hitting outfielder, but they're probably not going to pay for Cody Bellinger. The latest on Shoto, Chris Cotillo of Mass, Mass Live reports the Sox are considered, quote, a long shot to get a manga. Oh, his posting window closes on Thursday, so it's he's got to figure it out. Bidding for him has apparently been strong. He's drawn interest from a wide range of teams thus far. Angels and Giants are currently leading the candidates. The Angels are like, well, we, we don't have that Japanese player, but we'll get another one. Uh, MLB.com's Mark Feinstein suggests the Giants are merging as the favorites to sign the Southpaw. Although Fe though Feinstein adds that each of the Angels, Cubs, and Red Sox remain in the fold to some extent. Uh, there's still a number of ways in which left-handers final division. No, 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 no,
the field further narrowed. Yeah, the Japan report was saying angels and giants. Teoscar Hernandez deferred eight and a half million dollars of his contract. Everyone's pissed about that. <laughs> Why the hell is anybody paying Teoscar Hernandez twenty three million dollars? I don't know. I guess the Dodgers are. They didn't, yeah, I feel like they really didn't need him. It's like, I don't know, give that money like Blake Snell for a year. Is he really worth $23 million? Yeah, I have no idea. He'll, he'll get a lot of money, Snell. I don't think he's worth it, though. Oh, it's Oscar Hernandez. Joe Whitman to 4 9 I mean, he's decent. But that's, that's the market nowadays, guys like that. He strikes out a lot. But everyone does, I guess. 62 out of 199, Mike Bove. Purple Lunar. Although in this day and age, with everyone striking out a lot, if a player is characterized as strikes out a lot, that's when he strikes out a lot more than he should compared to his peers. Let's take a look at what, what Teoscar Hernandez can give us here. So with Seattle, played 160 games, got in 678 plate appearances, 26 homers, 93 RBIs, can steal a little bit, seven stolen bases, and an average of 258. Stress struck strikes out a third of the time, 31.1%. It's a lot. It was 28 and 25 the year before. It's kind of ballooned a little bit to 31%. And again, even in a strikeout heavy league, you don't like that. I think his splits are a lot better. If you look at, if you look at his splits, Fangraphs has a fun value uh, section in their in their player profiles. I think it takes average salary of all the ball players or something like that and they figure out what one win above replacement is worth. So in t with Toronto in 2022, he would have been about a $20 million player. The year before that, about a $34 million player. But last year with Seattle, about a $14 million player. If you want to look at it that way. But he's much better versus left-handed pitching. 287 average versus lefties, 249 versus righties. So I think that's where he'll be. He has more power from the right side. So I don't know. We'll see. I think, I think the end of the day, he's a better option than, than like the, I don't know, Chris Taylors of the world. Chris Taylor now becomes like a super utility guy as opposed to a pseudo everyday guy. Chris Taylor better in the super utility role, I think. Yeah, he, I guess he's a, he's sort of a Max Muncy-ish type, Chris Butler saying. I can see that. A right-handed Max Muncy? Would that be a good characterization? There's Bryce Aldridge. For the Giants, Chris Butler. That's for you. But I made this analogy when they signed Otani, when Dodgers signed Otani. I was like, I mean, when you buy, when you buy a Ferrari, I mean, you're not, you're not buying a Ferrari just to put crappy tires on it and, you know, put the lowest octane gas in there. That's not what you're doing. You know, at that point, you gotta. You're like, all right, well, I guess 
I said, I guess I need the high performance tires. They're still in head glass. That's for uh, Padres. That's for the Padres for Allen. You know, it's like, all right, got to put in the nice gas. It is kind of kind of wild to think that that's what, that's what the college football national championship always uh, always reminds me of the fact that a spring training is around the corner, b football season. We're starting to see fewer and fewer football games. Yeah, that's a good question, Chris. I don't know why Blake Snell is still available. My guess, I have no inside information. My guess is that he is um, asking for a lot of money. <laughs> and I think teams are reluctant to give him a lot of money because he has his, he, I don't know, he's just got weird seasons, right? Since he started being a full-time starter, you know, he gets gone from 4-7 war, 2-7 war, oh, 0.6 war, I mean, he's in the three seasons he was with the Padres, he's had two mess seasons and then one great season. So, is it one of those past performance does not indicate future result, right? So maybe that's sort of the weird spot where, and here's another Nazan Zanatello autograph for Chris Parent of the Red Sox. I feel like You know, Blake Snell as an agent is certainly saying, these Cy Young seasons, that's where you're going to get. Cy Young type seasons, this is where you can get from Blake Snell. You know, meanwhile, other GMs are probably looking at him, you know, looking at him going, ah, then I also see, it's like a, a boom or bust, but for the, through the entire season, kind of. You know, one year you get mediocre Blake Snell, and then a few years later you might get a Cy Young run out of Blake Snell. Now, if Blake Snell can convince people, hey, this Cy Young season, I figured it out. I can repeat this in future seasons. That's what he's got to pitch and convince somebody if he's going to get a big contract. Because after, after Shoto Imanga... Right? Or Imanaga, the Japanese pitcher. I mean, that domino will fall before Thursday. And after that, I mean, what are the other big, bigger name free agents? It's got to be Blake Snell. Someone's going to get desperate and sign Blake Snell to a big deal. Here's uh, Cole Young to 250. Otherwise, it might be a thing where Blake Snell... I don't know, maybe he signs like a, maybe if that long contract does not materialize, then maybe he'll accept like a, a one plus one sort of deal. You know, maybe probably with the Padres. You know, one year and then he gets a knocked out player option. So if he repeats close to what he did last year, you know, then maybe, then he can opt out and be like, all right, See, I can do this. Someone give me that big deal, and someone probably will at that point. Wyatt Lankford. Yeah, I think it's too, too inconsistent. I know. Ray's manager did us a favor in that World Series game. And a Jacob Wilson autograph. Nice. Chris Butler. There you go.
There's your sixth overall pick right there. Not numbered, but still nice. It's got a good auto, some decent penmanship too, especially for the kids these days. I think that might be your last autograph. There's a Matt Shaw paper, Jacob Wilson paper. We'll stumble into another parallel. Yes, we do. Zach Levinson to 499. That's for Eric and the Cardinals. Hey, you're welcome, Chris. Thanks for getting in. The same. There you go. That's it, everybody. I think that's it's the same with Bellinger. I think. You know, people are like, well, you know, is last season what's going to be what it's going to be like going forward? Is it a return to MVP era? Cody Bellinger, or is he going to regress to, you know, is he, is he going to regress? That's the big question, but those free agent dominoes still have to fall at some point. Thanks for baseballing with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.